Hello and welcome to this first video of the lesson Documentation Policy Condition 2. Here we will learn about some important provisions related to grace period, policy lapse, reinstatement, non forfeiture, and other special policy provisions. Let us first begin by understanding what grace period is and how it is related to policy lapse. The grace period is defined as an additional period of time in which the policyholder can pay the premium after it is due. The standard length of grace period is 31 days. The days of grace may be computed from the next day of the due date. If the premium is paid within the grace period, it is considered as payment on time and hence no penalty is charged. If premium remains unpaid, even after the grace period is over, the policy would then be considered lapsed and the company would not be under any obligation to pay the death benefits. So the insurance policy lapses if the policyholder does not pay premium on due date or within the grace period. Thank you. In this next video of the lesson, Documentation, Policy Condition 2, we will learn how a policy is reinstated or revived. Here we will cover the following concepts. Reinstatement is the process by which a life insurance company puts back into force a policy that has either been terminated because of non-payment of premiums or has been continued under one of the non-forfeiture provisions. A revival of the policy cannot, however, be an unconditional right of the insured. It can be accomplished only under certain conditions which are as follows. First, there should be no increase in the risk for insurer. Second, creation of reserve. The policyholder must pay such amount of premiums with interest which would lead to creation of the same reserve as it could have accumulated if the policy had not lapsed. Third, revival application within specific time period. Fourth, the insured must present satisfactory evidence of continued insurability to the insurance company. Fifth, the policy owner is required to make payment of all overdue premiums with interest from the due date of each premium. And sixth, the insured must also pay outstanding policy loan or reinstate indebtedness, if any. Let us now learn what underwriting formalities are required for policy revival. These are carried out at the time of revival of the policy, such as assessment of risk at the time of revival. And risk should be same as the original sum assured, less paid up value on the date of lapse. The underwriter has the following options. First, to revive as per the original policy terms. Second, to revive with modified terms. And third, to decline the revival. In general, one can receive a lapsed policy if the revival is within a certain period, say five years from the date of first unpaid premium. The following are the policy revival measures. First, ordinary revival. It is the simplest form of revival that involves payment of arrears of premium with interest. It is affected when the policy has acquired surrender value. Second, special revival. It is used when a policy has not acquired minimum surrender value within three years. In such case, a new policy is written whose date of commencement is within two years of the original date of commencement of the lapsed policy. Third, loan come revival. It involves two transactions, that is, simultaneous granting of a loan and revival of the policy. The arrears of premium would be calculated in the usual manner as under any ordinary revival scheme. Fourth, installment revival. It is allowed when the policyholder is not in a position to pay arrears of premium in a lump sum nor can the policy be revived under special revival scheme. Also, 
the arrears of premium would be calculated in the usual manner as under an ordinary revival scheme. Thank you. In this next video of the lesson, Documentation, Policy Condition 2, we will learn about special policy provisions and endorsements. Here we will cover the following concepts. Nomination is where the life assured proposes the name of the person to whom the assured sum should be paid by the insurance company after death. The life assured can nominate one or more than one person as nominees. Where more than one nominee is appointed, the death claim will be payable to them jointly or to the survivor or survivors. No specific share for each nominee can be made. Nomination can be done either at the time of policy purchase or later. Nomination gives the nominee a right to receive the policy money only in the event of the death of the life assured. Where the nominee is a minor, the policyholder needs to appoint an appointee. Nomination can be changed by making another endorsement in the policy. Let us now learn about some legal provisions related to nominations. Under Section 39 of the Insurance Act 1938, following provisions has been provided. First, the holder of a policy may nominate the person or persons to whom the money secured by the policy shall be paid in the event of her death. Second, nomination shall be done by endorsements. Third, it gives us the procedure to add, change or cancel the nomination. Fourth, it says that the assignment cancels nomination. Fifth, it describes what happens when the nominee dies. And sixth, it describes that nomination is not applicable to Section 6 of MWP Act. Thank you. In this next video of the lesson, Documentation Policy Condition 2, we will learn about the second part of special policy provisions and endorsements, that is, assignment. The term assignment ordinarily refers to transfer of property by writing as distinguished from transfer by delivery. On assignment, nomination is generally cancelled except when assignment is made to insurance company for a policy loan. The assignment of a life insurance policy implies the act of transferring the right, title and interest in the policy from one person to another. The person who transfers the rights is called a signer and the person to whom the property is transferred is called the assignee. One of the important provisions mentions that the assignment requires the parties to be competent to contract and is not subject to legal disqualifications and the assignee should not be eligible to get a claim that for some reason is rejected to the assured. There are two types of assignments. First is conditional assignment. It states that the policy shall revert back to the life assured if she is alive till the date of maturity or on the death of the assignee. Second is absolute assignment. It states that all rights, title and interest which the assigner has in the policy are transferred to the assignee without reversion to the former or her estate in any event. Absolute assignment is more commonly seen in many commercial situations where the policy is typically mortgaged against a debt assumed by the policyholder, like a housing loan. Let us now look at the conditions that are necessary for a valid assignment. First of all, the person executing it, that is the assigner, must have the absolute right and title or assignable interest to the policy being assigned. Secondly, it is necessary that the assignment be supported by valuable consideration which may include love and affection. Thirdly, it is imperative that the assignment is not opposed by any law in force. For example, the assignment of a policy to a foreign national residing in another country may contravene exchange control regulations. And finally, 
The assignee can do another assignment, but cannot do nomination because assignee is not life assured. Now let us compare nomination and assignment. Nomination is defined as the process of appointment of a person to receive the death claim. Whereas assignment is defined as the process of transferring the title of the insurance policy to another person or institution. Second, nomination can be done either at the time of proposal or after the commencement of the policy. Whereas assignment can be done only after commencement of the policy. Third, nomination can be made only by the life assured on the policy of his own life. Whereas assignment can be done by owner of the policy either by the life assured if he is the policy holder or the assignee. Fourth, nomination is applicable only where the Insurance Act 1938 is applicable. Whereas assignment is applicable all over the world according to the law of the respective country relating to transfer of property. Fifth, in nomination, the policyholder retains title and control over the policy and the nominee has no right to sue under the policy. Whereas in assignment, the policyholder loses the right, title and interest under the policy until a reassignment is executed and the assignee has a right to sue under the policy. Sixth, in nomination, witness is not required, whereas in assignment, witness is mandatory. Seventh, nominee has no right over the policy, whereas assignee gets full right over the policy and can even sue under the policy. Eighth, nominee can be revoked or cancelled at any time during the policy term, whereas the assignment once done cannot be cancelled but can be reassigned. Ninth, if nominee is a minor, an appointee has to be appointed, whereas if assignee is a minor, a guardian has to be appointed. Tenth, in case of nominee's death, the rights of the policy revert to the policyholder or to his or her legal heirs. Whereas in case of conditional assignee's death, the rights on the policy revert to the life assured based on the terms of assignment. Though in case of absolute assignee's death, his legal heirs are entitled to the policy. Eleventh, if the nominee dies before settlement, policy amount will be payable to the legal heirs of the life assured. Whereas if assignee dies before settlement, policy amount will be payable to the legal heirs of the assignee. And twelfth, creditor can attach the policy which has a nomination in it. Whereas creditors cannot attach the policy unless the assignment is shown to the creditor's defraud. Thank you. In this next video of the lesson, Documentation, Policy Condition 2, we will learn about duplicate policy and alterations as parts of special policy provisions and endorsements. Here we will learn about the concept of duplicate policy. A life insurance policy document is only an evidence of a promise. Loss or destruction of the policy document does not in any way absolve the company of its liability under the contract. Life insurance companies generally have standard procedures to be followed in case of loss of the policy document. Normally the office would examine the case to see if there is any reason to doubt the alleged loss. Satisfactory proof may required to be produced that the policy has been lost and not been dealt with in any manner. Generally, the claim may be settled on the claimant furnishing of an indemnity bond with or without surety. If payment is shortly due and the amount to be paid is high, the office may also insist that an advertisement be placed in a national paper with wide circulation reporting the loss. A duplicate policy may be issued on being sure that there is no objection from anyone else. Let us understand the concept of alteration. Insurers allow alterations in the policy after the policy has been issued. 
Normally, alterations may not be permitted during the first year of the policy. However, there are certain exceptions. Alterations are permitted for change in the mode of premium or for those which are of compulsory nature, like change in name or address, readmission of age in case it is proved higher or lower, request for grant of double accident benefit or permanent disability benefit, and so on. Alterations require the approval of the underwriters as some may lead to increase in risk. The underwriter has to go through the underwriting process again because any change in the sum assured to a higher side will increase the risk. Some of the main types of alterations that are permitted are First, change in certain classes of insurance or term where risk is not increased. Second, reduction in the sum assured. Third, change in the mode of payment of premium. Fourth, change in the date of commencement of the policy. Fifth, splitting up of the policy into two or more policies. Sixth, removal of an extra premium or restrictive clause. Seventh, change from without profits to with profits plan. Eighth, correction in name. And ninth, settlement option for payment of claims and grant of double accident benefit. Here is a quick look at the topics covered in this chapter. Thank you.